Hey everybody, welcome back. In this episode, we're going to be talking about static methods. Now, I do recommend, well, in general, you can just jump into this course wherever you need. However, I do recommend that you watch the previous episode in this specific situation because the previous episode we talked about static data members or basically static variables. But now I want to talk about static methods, but it's going to build on the same principles. Basically, though, the crash course is we access data directly on that user class or whatever class we are working with. This is how system.out works. Out is a static data member, so we access it directly on this system class and we don't have to instantiate it. But now, uh, instead of just talking about variables, I want to talk about methods. But you know, before we talk about that, I gotta tell you guys something. There is no better way to create better code than to have a really solid testing system with high test coverage. And there's no better way to do that than to use our sponsor. This video is sponsored by DiffBlue. DiffBlue offers a free AI powered unit test generation tool for Java developers. DiffBlue writes your unit tests for you and delivers human readable code to increase your test coverage and speed up your development while ensuring you didn't break anything along the way. With a free community edition available as an IntelliJ plugin, DiffBlue is super easy to get started with. Best of all, as a viewer of my channel, you can get a free license upgrade to use the community edition for all commercial code and three free months of the professional edition, which has additional features and support. Get started using the link below. All right, so here's what we're gonna do. We're going to create a method that is going to do essentially this for us. So we, we're printing all of the names of the admins in this case. But if we wanted to do that regularly throughout our code, we don't want to have to write out these crazy loops. We would just want to call a method and it does it for us. So it's going to be very similar and I actually really like this one, not this disgusting one up here. So I'm going to take this one and then I'm just going to delete that one because it's trash. All right, so we'll save this and we'll go over to the user class and we're going to create that method right here. So it's going to look like public static. Uh, we'll just call it like print admin names or something. And since this is printing stuff, we don't actually have to return anything. So we can just say void. And that should be it. So we'll paste that for loop here. And it's getting this from user.admins. However, because both of these are static, you don't actually have to invoke it on that user class. So we can just delete that. It's just going to assume that implicitly it's talking about a static member here. And you can see that in the highlighting here, which is nice, uh, a nice feature with these IDEs. So I think that's it, man. I was expecting this to be like a lot more material, but this is probably going to be pretty easy. So now instead of creating a loop or trying to do the output ourselves, all we have to do is say user dot, and then you can see print admin names save, run this, and we get Caleb, you, and Sally, which are all the names. Wow, that's so simple. So one common use that I use static methods for is if I want a, a method to read data from a file to get, for example, let's say I had a file of 100 users in a text file. Well, instead of creating a function on its own, I'll often associate that directly with that user and just create it as a static method. And then all it would do is just return a list of users. I've talked about similar things in other videos out on YouTube. So, I mean, you can find pretty much anything you want from my channel. Just search Caleb and then put what you want and then hit enter. And then click like. And then check out the next video. The next video is going to be fire because that's where we're talking about the second pillar of object-oriented programming, which is inheritance.